What's up Covalence friends? Today we're going to be going over some of the subtleties and differences between ESM and CommonJS by actually converting one of our Express Template repos that's currently CommonJS into an Express Template ESM repo. So let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so we're starting off with our Express Template repo and I've renamed it to be ESM and it's going to be the Express Template ESM. And the first thing we're actually going to do is we are going to add something to our package.json which is called type. And instead of common JS, it's actually going to be module now. So it's now going to treat, Node is going to treat this entire package as a module and it's going to use ESM importing and all of that. Right now we're using TypeScript and TypeScript is a little different um, in how it treats things. And so we actually have to tell TypeScript as well in these compiler options that we're going to be targeting uh, you know, something newer. So we can actually update this target. It's not super important to update the target, but we might as well since we're going to be targeting newer ECMAScript anyway. So let's just go ahead. Um, we actually have ES2023 in here, but let's just do ES2022. And we're also going to update this module here. Now, instead of common JS, we're actually going to be doing, we could do ES next, we could do ES2022. Um, it really doesn't matter to be totally honest. So we'll just do ES2022 to keep it consistent, but you could actually do ES next. Uh, I think you could even go back as far as ES2017. Um, let's see, oh, 2020 probably. All right, so now 2017. But let's do ES2022. And we are going to get out of these TS config options and we're gonna exit out of the package.json as well. And we're gonna start actually fixing all of the files in here. So all the browser based stuff, you're not gonna have to worry about. So the app.ts in, in this file, that's all being run on the browser. So that's not gonna be affected. And the good thing about this is that CommonJS in particular was what Node used because the ES module system didn't exist yet. So like historically, if we entered into this index.ts, it would actually go through these synchronously. And you know, TypeScript actually uh, evolve this import statement or, or it allows you to do this import statement, but under the hood TypeScript is actually compiling this to use require statements and the require statements are what common JS uses and it's a synchronous option. So when it loads this index.ts, it actually will require the files from express. It'll pull all those in. It'll then require this configure um, default function from dot slash routers. And that is all going to load. And so it actually will load all the express files and then it'll jump into this routers. It'll jump into this index file here and it'll run all of these import statements synchronously, right? And so for an application that's massive, um, it could take a long time. I mean, you're talking about synchronously loading all these packages and getting all this code to run uh, before you know it actually even ends up potentially starting, right? And so that's why a lot of these deployment uh, systems like Azure and whatnot, all these um, deployment services and everything, they allow you to have these health settings that will allow you to actually set an application health check or an application ready time. And you can increase, decrease that, and you can actually give your application time to start up before it start, starts receiving traffic, right? And so that's been essentially, all these have been responses to more or less the common JS system. Um, now this ES module system, it works on both the browser and the backend, which is very cool. And I can tell that node is obviously since I think node 13 dot something, it's been, you know, in, it's been stable and uh, they've been using ES modules ever since then. And so you can actually um, like node packages can actually have both. They can have both common JS and ESM and you can actually import either or, right? And so in your package.json for your node package, you can actually have entry points for both. So you could have entry point for common JS, you can have entry point for ESM um, or the module system, right? And so the issue is, is that if you have a current node application that's already using common JS, it's a bit of a pain to actually update it to use all ESM. Now that's what we're doing right now. And one of the major differences is that, let's start with some of the actually, let's not start with this main file. We're gonna start with this user file because this would be um, probably one of the lower level files. But you can see that we're importing router from Express. That's fine. That's not, not, not anything we actually have to worry about right now. So we're not actually importing any files other than from node modules right now. So this is actually, it's a common JS uh, package, I believe. They might, they actually, looks like they might allow yeah, so they might allow ESM as well. I haven't looked at Express's uh, package in a minute, 
but we're going to just allow it to run. We're gonna see if it works for now and we're just going to import things just like this. So this file should be fine and we're exporting this default function users, which is fine. That syntax still works. And if you were, if you had it in a uh, JavaScript file, right? So TypeScript makes it significantly easier, but if it was a JavaScript file, you'd have a module.exports equals, and it would be, um, you know, module.exports equals users. And that would actually be the, the default export of, you know, this file. But for this particular case, since we're using TypeScript, um, you would actually have to convert that module to exports equals into this same syntax. So thankfully TypeScript actually makes this significantly easier. So in terms of converting this from a TypeScript project into a ESM TypeScript project, it does allow significant like ease in, in that case, right? And so again, if this was a JavaScript file, you'd have a module that exports uh, or equals syntax in here and you'd have to remove that and you'd actually have to add this instead. You'd actually have to export your default function users and then you'd be fine and you change the requires all the requires would now be imports um, and then if you needed to require something you could use a function called create require which is import dot create require and that would allow you to actually do that as well so we are going to not have we're not going to worry about that if you have any questions about that just drop it in the comments below but what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change this file here you can see that we're actually referencing or importing this file dot user that we were just in but in the ESM mod or module syntax, you actually have to put a file extension on there. And so it is a little weird with TypeScript because you actually have your user.ts, you're not actually looking at user.js, but you have to import the file that it's going to eventually be, right? And so TypeScript is going to transpile user.ts into user.js, and that's what you're gonna be importing. Now, if you had a common JS file, you could actually import.cjs, right? So that's gonna force it to be a common JS. And then if you wanted to import a, force it to be a modular type system, you can import a .mjs file. And with TypeScript, you can actually create um, .mts and .cts files as well. But I wouldn't recommend it trying to convert your existing TypeScript project by just converting all the file extensions. That doesn't seem to work very well because TypeScript will actually always compile if you have import statements, it'll always compile it to be ESM modules if the actual whole project is ESM. So it won't actually convert these to be require statements. You'd actually have to have require uh, functions already in there, right? And so again, we, are, um, we already have this file set up because we're using TypeScript. So we are already using this syntax, which is already ESM syntax. And so we're good. Again, if you had a .js file and you would have to convert the module that exports to look like this. So this is actually what you would be converting it to look like. TypeScript just makes this a little bit easier. So we are going to now be importing this user.js user file. And then we're gonna have to do the exact same thing here with the API. So we're gonna change this to be a.js file as well. And one other thing is that body parser is going to be a common JS module. So I'm assuming Express actually, since it allows you to do this, um, it's probably set up for ESM, but for body parser, it is not. So we actually have to import just a default function in here. And the one thing that is nice is that TypeScript has this ES module interop right down. It's pretty far down apparently. Yep, ES module interop, which emit additional JavaScript to ease support for importing common JS modules. So in this particular case, this is a common JS module. And so typically it would actually prefer um, that you would do something like this, but because we have that ES module interop on, we can just actually import parser from body parser. And then since we're not actually, you know, just pulling or uh, destructuring that, we're, we can actually just grab parser.json and then we're gonna fix that little error there. Now, another big issue with, com or with uh, ESM is that global variables like dir name doesn't exist, right? And so this is actually a property of the common JS system. And so now we don't actually have this. So if we were to run this, we'd actually get a dir name is undefined, right? And so it won't know what this is. And so what we could do is we could remove this code or we could actually uh, just create our own variable and figure out a way to actually grab this. So if we wanted to create our dir name, what we could do is we could import so let's see, we'll import, oops, 
import URL from URL, right? So we're gonna import this URL module and then URL has a function that is path. It's actually gonna be file URL to path, right? So we're gonna actually grab this fire URL and we're gonna say new URL and we're gonna pass in a just dot for the first function for the URL because we actually want to just grab the base, right? And the base is import.meta that URL, right? And so import the meta URL is the actual current URL of this file. And so this property exists again on the browser and on the server, which is super awesome. This code, you want it to be as like, you know, dynamically uh, available as possible. And so when you're writing these packages, if you write ESM syntax, your package can be used on both the client and the server, which definitely what you want. So Honestly, like it, it's unfortunate that Node didn't do this from the beginning. Um, but again, the module system didn't exist when Node first started. And so I know for a fact that they probably would only have used this if it had existed from day one, right? And so definitely if you're starting a new project, I would suggest you actually start with ESM syntax. And now we have, and, uh, and you know, moving forward, you know, if you want to convert all your old stuff, you can, but it's not an absolute necessity. I think CommonJS will probably always still be supported, but I do feel like a lot of packages nowadays are moving more towards the ESM side of things. So let's go ahead and one, we're gonna have to change one more thing and that's gonna be this dot slash routers. And we just have to actually do, we're gonna import this index.js here and we should be more or less good to go now. So this should have actually converted everything because we are using TypeScript and made things super easy. We already had the import statements and everything like that. And so now we are going to go ahead and we're going to run it and hope for the best. So let's go ahead and open up a new terminal. I've already NPM installed, so we should be able to just NPM run dev. All right, it looks like everything seemed to run. Let's pop open a browser and you can see that our project runs no problem. And it's actually running everything in with ESM syntax. And so if you wanted to import an ESM module, something like uh, shoelace, for instance, you could do that now. All right, so I hope that was easy enough to understand. Obviously using TypeScript from the get-go makes this conversion significantly easier because you don't have to mess around with changing up the module to export you know, assignments and whatnot and changing them to be import and export calls since TypeScript already used those out of the box. But I will say that one thing I forgot to mention was that if you're using older versions of Node, be careful about you know, using ES2022 or whatever ECMAScript version you're actually assigning it to just to make sure that everything is compatible and the node actually supports it. If you're using a very old version of node, I wouldn't even recommend using the ESM because it doesn't, probably doesn't support it or doesn't support it well. So definitely recommend using node like 14 or later. And if you have any particular questions about your case uh, or just a common JS versus ESM question in general, drop them in the comments below and we'll be sure to make another video. So hope you enjoy Check out our merch at covalence.merchantly.com. And again, we hope to see you soon.